Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about method of Lagrange multipliers with one constraint. First of all, I'm going to explain you this method for functions of two variables. To find the maximum and minimum values of a two variable function f, which is subject to the constraint g, assuming that these extreme values exist and the gradient of g is not zero on the curve g of x, y equals k, we first find all x, y, and lambda that satisfy the following system. Now, in the system, we have a vector equation, which is the gradient of f is equal to lambda times gradient of g. And we have also the equation g of x, y equals k. Then, in the second step, we evaluate f at all x, y found in step 1. Now, our conclusion is as follows. The largest of these values found in step 2 is the maximum value of f on the curve g of x, y equals k. And the smallest of these values found in step 2 is the minimum value of f on the curve g of x, y equals k. Now, we can also state this method for functions of three variables. The statement is very similar. Now, we have a function of three variables, f of x, y, and z, and our uh, constraint is also a three-variable function, g of x, y equals k, which is a surface. And then, in the first step, we find again uh, all x, y, z, and lambda that satisfy the system with the vector equation gradient of f equals lambda times gradient of g, and g of x, y, z equals k. And then we evaluate our function at the x, y, and z found in step 1. And the largest of these values is the maximum of f on the surface g of x, y, z equals k. And the smallest of these values is the minimum value of f on the surface g of x, y, z equals k. In this exercise, we are going to use method of Lagrange multipliers to find the maximum and minimum values of the two variable function f, which is equal to x squared y, subject to the constraint x squared plus 2y squared equals 6. Now, first of all, let's write our constraint function. It is x squared plus 2y squared. And in the Lagrange multipliers method, we are going to need the gradient of g. So let's find that as well. It is the vector 2x for y. Also, our function f is x squared times y. And the gradient of f is 2xy x squared. So, if we want to use the method of Lagrange multipliers, we need to solve the following system. Gradient of f is equal to lambda times gradient of g and g of x, y is equal to 6. So, let's rewrite this system. The first uh, equation, which is a vector equation, gives us the following scalar equations. 2x, y is equal to lambda, so 2 lambda x, and x squared is equal to 4 lambda y, and our constraint is x squared plus 2y squared is equal to 6. Now, our goal is to find x, y, and lambda, which satisfies these three equations. Now, the first equation, I can first of all 
uh, cancel the twos. So x, y equals lambda x. And I will keep the other two equations same for lambda y and x squared plus 2y squared equals 6. Now, if we look at the first equation in the system, we see that there is x on the left side and uh, x on the right side. So, to be able to cancel this x, I need to know that it is whether it is 0 or not. So, let's see what happens if x is 0. Now, if x is 0, then using the third equation, I can find the values of y. So, if x is equal to 0, then 2y squared is equal to 6. So, y is equal to either root 3 or negative root 3. So, we find the points 0, root 3 and 0, negative root 3. In case x is 0. Now, in case x is not 0, then in the first equation, I can simplify the x's and we find that y is equal to lambda. And if I substitute this value of y in the second equation, I find that x squared is equal to 4 lambda squared. Then, if we substitute all these in the third equation, we find that 4 lambda squared plus 2 lambda squared is equal to 6. So, in case x is not 0, our system becomes this system. And from the third equation, we see that lambda squared is equal to 6, which is lambda is equal to 1, or lambda is equal to negative 1. So, if lambda is equal to 1, y is 1, and x squared is equal to 4. So, from here we find the points 2, 1 or negative 2, 1. Now, if lambda is equal to negative 1 and y is negative 1 and x squared is still equal to 4 and we find the points 2, negative 1, and, so, and, negative 2, negative 1. So, to summarize, at the end of the first step, which is the, which is about solving the system, we find the following six points, 0 root 3, 0, negative root 3, 2, 1, negative 2, 1, 2, negative 1, and negative 2, negative 1. So, in the next step, I'm going to evaluate f at all these points. So, 0 root 3, 0, negative root 3, f of 2, 1, f of negative 2, 1, and f of 2, negative 1, and f of negative 2, negative 1. Okay, if I plug in 0 root 3 in my function, remember that our function is x squared y, we'll find 0. Similarly, for, for 0, negative 3, now, at 2, 1, we are going to find 4. At negative 2, 1, we will again find 4. And at 2, negative 1, we will find negative 4. And at negative 2, negative 1, we'll find again 
negative 4. So, now, the largest of these values is the maximum of f on the curve x squared plus 2y squared equals 6. So, and I observe that this here is the largest. And the smallest value, which is negative 4, is the, going to be the minimum uh, of f. So our conclusion the maximum value of f on the curve x squared plus 2y squared equals 6 is 4 and the minimum value of f on the curve x squared plus 2y squared equals 6 is negative 4. In this exercise, we'd like to find the absolute maximum and minimum of f of xy equals e to the xy on the region x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 4. Okay, so since the question asks us to find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum, we should make sure that our region is a bounded and closed region. So let's first of all have a look at our region. So, this equation, or this inequality, it's a disk with radius 2. And the boundary of this disk is included in the region, so it's a closed and bounded region. And therefore, we can find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum of f on this region. Okay, so these absolute uh, maximum and absolute minimum questions, we first have to look for the critical points inside the region. So. For that, we need to find the partial derivatives of f. So, with respect to x, we find y e to the xy, and then we set it equal to zero. And the partial derivative of f with respect to y is x e to the xy, and we also set it equal to the zero. Now, since e to the xy is never zero, the only solution uh, we get is that xy is equal to the zero and zero. So, okay, next we need to verify whether this point zero zero, which is in fact the origin, is inside our disk or not. And we observe that this point is right here. So, 0, 0 is the only critical point of F in this region. And we evaluate F at this critical point and we find that it is e to the power 0 which is equal to 1. Now, I'm going to box this result because later we are going to compare this value with other values of f. Okay, now in the next step we are going to work on the boundary of our region. And 
the boundary of our region is x squared plus y squared equals 4. And in this step, our goal is to find the maximum and minimum value of f on the boundary. Now, since the boundary is x squared plus y squared equals 4, finding the maximum and minimum of f on the boundary means finding the maximum and minimum of f which is subject to the boundary equation x squared plus y squared equals 4. So, let me write that down clearly. We want to find the maximum and the minimum of f which is e to the power xy subject to the constraint x squared plus y squared equals 4. And to solve this problem, we are going to use the method of Lagrange multipliers. So, our constraint function is x squared plus y squared. Its gradient is 2x to y. Our function f is e to the power xy and its gradient is we have just calculated the partial derivatives of f so y e to the xy and x e to the xy okay and in the next step we solve the following system gradient of f equals lambda times gradient of g and g of xy is equal to 4. Let's rewrite this system. The first vector equation gives us the following scalar equations. y e to the power xy is equal to lambda times 2x, so it's 2 lambda x, and then x e to the power xy is equal to 2 lambda y, and the constraint gives us x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. Okay, now to solve this system, first of all, let's have a look at the first uh, equation. Now, if in the first equation, let's say x is equal to 0, then y times e to the power xy is equal to 0. However, since e to the power xy is never zero, the solution of this equation is y equals zero. So, what we observe is if x is zero, then y is zero. But this objects to the last equation. Since the point zero, zero does not satisfy the last equation x squared plus y squared equals 4 x cannot be equal to 0. So, we can reach to similar conclusion for y and lambda because now if y is equal to 0 this time I use the second equation with the same arguments and then I realize that the point 0 0 it doesn't satisfy the last equation and if lambda equals 0 you can again 
uh, see either from the first equation or from the second equation that x and y uh, have to be both equal to zero, and this will again object to the third equation. So x, y, and lambda cannot be equal to zero. So because of this, I can rewrite the first equation as follows. e to the power x, y is equal to 2 lambda x over y. And then the second equation, I can write it as 2 lambda y over x. And the third equation, I don't change it. It's still x squared plus y squared equals 4. Now, in the first and second equations, the left-hand sides are equal, so the right-hand sides should be also equal. And from that, I get that 2 lambda x over y is equal to 2 lambda y over x. And we know that lambda is not 0, so I can cancel the 2 lambdas from both sides of the equation, and I reach to the equation x over y equals y over x. I still have the last equation, which is x squared plus y squared equals 4. Then I simplify the first equation, and I get x squared equals y squared. Second equation, still x squared plus y squared equals 4. So, if I substitute the result of the first equation in the second equation, I get 2x squared equals 4. And from this, x is equal to 2, uh, excuse me, root 2, or x is equal to uh, negative root 2. And then x is equal to root 2 means y squared is equal to 2, which means that y is equal to root 2 or negative root 2. So we find two points, root 2, root 2, or root 2, negative root 2. And in the same way, when x is equal to negative root 2, y squared will be 2, which means y is root 2 or negative root 2, and which gives us the points negative root 2, root 2, or negative root 2, negative root 2. Okay, so I have found so far four points on the boundary, and I'm going to evaluate my function at those boundary points, f of root 2, root 2, f of root 2, negative root 2, f of negative root 2, root 2, and f of negative root 2, and negative root 2. So, here we find e to the power root 2 times root 2, which is e, which will give us e squared. This will give us e to the power negative 2. Similarly, e to the power negative 2, and e to the power 2. So, conclusion for the boundary is the following. The maximum uh, value of f on the boundary x squared plus y squared equals 4 is e squared and the minimum value of f on the boundary x squared plus y squared equals 4 is e to the power negative 2. Okay, this is the conclusion 
uh, of our work on the boundary. Now, we compare our conclusions on the boundary and this, uh, the value of f in this red box, because this is the value of f at the critical point. Now, we realize that e to this e squared is more than 1, so the absolute maximum of f on the region x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 4 is e squared. The absolute maximum value of f and the absolute minimum value of f on the region is, okay, I need to compare e to the power negative 2 and 1 and choose the smallest as the absolute minimum and we notice that e to the negative 2 is less than 1, so the absolute minimum value of f is e to the power negative 2. Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about the method of Lagrange multipliers with two constraints. To find the maximum and minimum values of a three variable function f, which is subject to the constraints g of x, y, z equals k and h of x, y, z equals c, assuming that these extreme values exist and the gradients of the constraints are not equal to zero and they are not parallel, we first find all x, y, z, lambda and mu that satisfy the following system made of the following equations. Our first equation, it's a vector equation which says that the gradient of f is equal to lambda times gradient of g plus mu times gradient of h. The second equation is our uh, first constraint, g of x, y, z equals k. And the second third equation is the second constraint h of x, y, z equals c. And then in the second step we evaluate f at all x, y, z uh, found uh, in the first step. And then to conclude, the largest of the values found in step 2 is the maximum value of f and the smallest of the values found in step 2 is the minimum value of f. Now, let's see an application of method of Lagrange multipliers with two constraints in the following question. The plane x plus y plus 2z equals 2 intersects the paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared in an ellipse. We'd like to find the points on this ellipse that are nearest to and farthest from the origin. So, first of all, let's write the function that we would like to find the minimum and the maximum of. So, since we'd like to minimize and maximize a distance to origin, the function that we are going to work with is f of x, y, z equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Then our constraints Now, we'd like to find the points which, which are nearest to and farthest from the origin, which are on the ellipse. Now, being on the ellipse means being on the paraboloid and being on the plane. So, our x, y and z should satisfy the plane equation and also the paraboloid equation. So, those are our two constraints. So, let me 
write the constraint function. So g of x, y, z is equal to x plus y plus 2z minus 2 and h of x, y, z is equal to x squared plus y squared minus 2 minus z. Okay, now we need to find the gradient of f and the gradients of our uh, constraints. The gradient of f first. So partial derivatives are 2x, 2y, and 2z. The gradient of g, its partials are 1, 1, and 2. And the partial, uh, the gradient of h, its partials are 2x, 2y, and negative 1. Okay, then the system that we are supposed to solve is the following. So first the vector equation gradient of f is equal to lambda times gradient of g plus mu times gradient of h and then our constraints x plus y plus uh, 2z minus 2 is equal to 0 and x squared plus y squared minus z is also equal to 0. Okay, since our first equation is a vector equation and the other two are scalar equations, let's write the vector equation also in terms of uh, scalar equations. So here we get 2x is equal to lambda plus 2 mu x and then 2y is equal to lambda plus again 2 mu y and uh, the third equation is 2z is equal to 2 lambda plus in fact minus mu. So we get these three scalar equations from the vector equation and then the last two equations which correspond to our constraints x plus y plus 2z equals 2 and x squared plus y squared minus z is equal to 0. Okay, so now our goal is to find the x, y, z and lambda and mu which satisfies the system. So let me number these uh, equations. Now, if I take the difference of the first two equations, I would say using equation 1 and equation 2, we find that 2x minus y is equal to 2 mu x minus y. Okay. Now, if x minus y is different than 0, which means that x is different than y, then we can simplify the x minus y from both sides of the equation and we find that mu is equal to 1. If I substitute this value of mu in the third equation, I'm going to find that 2z is equal to 2 lambda minus 1, which gives me that lambda is equal to 
z plus 1 over 2. If I also substitute this value of mu in the first equation, I'm going to find that 2x is equal to lambda plus 2x, which gives us that the lambda is equal to 0. Now, using these two, lambda is equal to 0 and lambda is equal to z plus 1 over 2, we find that z is equal to negative 1 over 2. Okay, now if I use this value of z in the fifth equation, I'm going to have x squared plus y squared minus negative 1 over 2 equals 0, which gives us that x squared plus y squared is equal to negative 1 over 2. But the sum of two squares cannot be equal to a negative number. So here we have no solution. And therefore, x has to be equal to y. Now let's see how this information is going to affect the other equations in the system. So now using equations 4 and 5, we have 2x plus 2z is equal to 2 and 2x squared minus z is equal to 0. So I have now uh, two equations with two variables. I simplify these equations. The first one becomes x plus z equals 1 and the second equation is z equals 2 x squared. Now, if I solve the first equation for z, I have 1 minus z equals 1 minus x, and the second equation is z equals 2x squared. So from this system, I obtain a quadratic equation, 2x squared equals 1 minus x. So I rewrite it as 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. To find the zeros of this quadratic equation, I factorize it as 2x plus 1 times x minus uh, 2x minus 1 times x plus 1 equals 0. So the solutions are x equals 1 over 2 or x equals negative 1. Now, let's see what happens if x is equal to 1 over 2? Then z, since it is equal to 1 minus x, is going to be 1 minus 1 over 2, which is 1 over 2. And we also know that y is equal to x, so y is also 1 over 2. So we find the point 1 over 2, 1 over 2, 1 over 2. Now, if x is equal to negative 1, then z will be 1 minus negative 1, which gives 2, and y is equal to x, so it is also negative 1. And in the case x is equal to 1, we find the point negative 1, negative 1, and 2. Now, those are the points which satisfy the system of these five equations. Now, let's evaluate our function at those points. So, f of 1 over 2, 1 over 2, 1 over 2 
is equal to 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 2 squared which is 3 over 4. Now if I evaluate f at the other point I'll get negative 1 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 2 squared which is 6. So the maximum value of f is 6 and the minimum value of f is 3 over 4. So our conclusion is the following. So the point negative 1, negative 1, 2 is the point on the ellipse which is farthest from the origin and the point 1 over 2, 1 over 2, 1 over 2 is the point on the ellipse which is closest to the origin.